take a peek in here. Are you kidding me? God, are you kidding me? Are you crazy? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on the Kansas Angling Experience channel. My name is Brian. If you guys are new here, have a really, really exciting video. I have been so, so jacked for this opportunity and to be able to do this video, I've got my good buddy Grant behind the camera here. I posted a poll on the community page a couple days ago that I got my dad a big surprise for his retirement at the end of February. I don't even know if he's gonna make it to the end of February, honestly. But now that time has finally arrived right here in this box. I think you guys probably already know what this is. So Grant and I have just been kind of taking the last like 20 to 30 minutes to just get the configuration of my dad's boat all figured out because we're going to install live scope for my dad. And honestly, the whole reason that this is happening is because of you guys. I told myself that when the YouTube channel took off and I got my first nice little YouTube check that I was gonna do something special for my dad. And this is a perfect opportunity. So we bought live scope, big shout out to my buddy Chris for hooking that up. We're gonna do the whole entire thing. So I've got the PVC, I'm gonna make the pole. We're gonna go from start to finish on how to make the pole, start to finish on the entire install. I also got him the sea light adapter because we're gonna use the DeWalt battery setup uh, to make it a little bit easier for him. So we'll go through that whole install. But yeah, I had to make up something to my, and just tell my dad like I was gonna detail his boat. I needed it for a couple days, something like that. I, I don't even honestly remember what I said. I just kind of blacked out because uh, I was so excited. So we've got the boat here in my buddy Richard's uh, heated shop. So thank you so much to Richard for letting us borrow this because it is like, it is like 16 degrees outside. But yeah, this might be a like two day affair. We're gonna try and get all the wiring and stuff done, all the wires ran everything set up tonight try and get the pole made and then on the front of the boat I got my dad like a rail mounted ram mount for the pole to go over because he does have rails running the length of his gunnels up there so yeah we're gonna get this thing unboxed uh, kind of go through everything again just I've never like actually done an unboxing and for you guys that have live scope it's not gonna be anything new but again I cannot thank all of you guys enough because you guys made this happen all 12 11 12 thousand subscribers all the views on the channel over the last six months everything is taken off so thank you guys once again for making this happen so i guess i don't really want to talk that much anymore we're just going to go ahead get this baby unboxed and start walking you guys through the entire process okay so let's do this oh buddy there she be the whole damn thing panoptics live scope system for my dad <laughs> all right first foremost here we've got the black box uh that's obviously going to be something that we need and then the rest of everything here what do we got that's the mount for yep that's the transducer mount right there got the transducer power all that good stuff so i don't know we'll just kind of leave this as it is for now. So now I think that's uh, that's pretty much it. So we're just gonna get this all laid out. Uh, I'm gonna get in the boat and start running some wires and go from there. All right, well, we are in the Alumacraft. So I think what we're gonna do for my dad's boat, uh, unlike what I did in my boat, is we're not gonna mount the black box underneath the console and run the wire up. There's a lot going on down there. I think because we're doing the DeWalt battery setup, I'm actually going to Put the black box in that compartment right there and then mount the sea light adapter for the dewalt batteries right there that way my dad's old ass doesn't have to bend down up underneath this console and we also don't have to run a ton of wire and stuff it's just going to make it so much easier and then like i said before this is where we're going to mount the ram mount uh not going to drill into his boat but actually do the rail mounted ram mount for the pole. My dad normally has his uh, front deck piece right here, which is actually just right here. He's always sitting right there. So this is gonna be the perfect little zone for my dad to live scope. So yeah, I think just with that said, give you guys kind of the layout of what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. It takes me like 10 minutes to make uh, the pole. So we're gonna get the pole made up and uh, also get it spray painted and then start on all the uh, other fun stuff. All right, so we have got 
one section of one inch PVC pipe and then one section of one and a quarter inch PVC pipe. This one inch is obviously going to go in the inside of the one and a quarter. We've got this coupler here uh, to go into the one to swivel on the inside of the one and a quarter. And then that I'm going to cut down to make the handle. Obviously caps for both. I'm going to get those glued on. I did not bring any super glue, but we can always do that later or not at all. Just pound them on there. So yeah, I'm going to throw the hat cam on. We're going to measure out, uh, do 60 inches. Mine is actually a little bit shorter, but as you guys can see, my dad's boat is just a little bit deeper than mine. It drafts a little bit more. So I'm just going to make his an even 60. Forgot the tape measure. So <laughs> thankfully my dad put all of his fishing rods in the boat. We're just going to use a six foot rod here to uh, measure out. And yeah, so let's get this uh, measured out in the most redneck way possible and get to cutting. I'm going to throw the hat cam on. The key to this whole situation is making sure that your one inch PVC pipe is just about five, maybe six inches longer than your one and a quarter because that bottom section right about down here is where that transducer mount is gonna go. So for now, we're just gonna measure out 60 inches on the one and one quarter. I should probably loosen this up and make sure that's actually straight. All right, I get it. There's pole number one. So now what I do is I take the one inch, the long section, and I put it through. So that's right about where we probably need to be. But the good thing is we're just gonna go back over to the box, grab the actual transducer mount, and then put that on here and measure it out that way. So we've got your transducer piece here. That's where it's gonna go right there. I always give myself just a little bit extra so it doesn't stick. Can you give me the one inch cap? Yeah, grab me the capper there. That's not going anywhere. It does not need to be super glued. That ought to be good right about there. Just give, you can always leave yourself more, but you don't want that sticking just in case. Okay, so we got marked where we're gonna cut right there. It's gonna be about an inch up. So we've got our super glue and we're gonna super glue that guy on once we get that cut. So let's get that cut. Okay. Like a glove. All right, so we've got that measured out just perfect for the transducer mount. Run up the pole. We've got the cap on for the, on the coupler for the handle, which I'm obviously gonna cut down, put a cap on that side, but this is money. Glue. That's as far as it's going in now. That's fine, you can turn it up. That's it. Grant, show me your pole. Hey, there you go, folks. That was a 10 minute DIY live scope pole. That's the one that I'm gonna start making and selling. Cheers. So live scope pole's done. So I guess all we really gotta do is spray paint that. So we'll probably shoot a couple coats of spray paint on that. I don't know if we're gonna do it in here or out there. Um, and then we're gonna start the actual live scope stuff. But that way, in the midst of all that, the spray paint can be setting up and stuff. So that's where we're going now. All right, so we got the first coat done. Gonna let that cure for a little while, uh, probably a longer while. Flip it over and then do whatever's left, but that black, uh, like my new one, is gonna look pretty good. So always go with the Canyon Black Satin. I'm not a big gloss guy. I know my dad is, but he's getting the matte black version. So yes, paint and primer, not just paint. So quick update and drink break here. So we've got Pretty much everything laid out kind of looks like a giant disaster but i had to get up my dad recently just re-ran the power for his front graph all the way back to his console to a bus bar so now what we've done is taken that power from down here cut that 
This is the end of it right here with the fuse that Garmin sends. So we've got the power isolated because I'm gonna do it just like my setup. I'm gonna have the front graph and the black box running off of the seawall or the sea light DeWalt adapter. So the black box, I'm gonna lay right in this compartment up there. And then I think right now what we're gonna do, he, my dad might be a little pissed about this, but I think we're gonna drill a small hole right there so that those wires can go through this part of the deck instead of trying to run them out of here like mine because I'm not very happy with mine, but that's just how I decided to do it. So yeah, like I said, it's kind of, kind of looks like a disaster right now, but things are starting to finally make sense in my head. So now what we need to do is get that hole drilled, get the wires ran, and then we can take the sea light adapter and then connect power from the black box to the sea light adapter and then the graph also to the sea light adapter. So I hope this is kind of all making sense, but when I did mine, I did not do a video on it and now we are doing a video on it. So it might be a little convoluted, but it is making sense and I do enjoy doing this. So we're gonna try and put it all together in this video. So yeah, let's get started. That looks good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna be right there. One down. One thing about this that I'm doing a little bit differently than last time is I popped for the actual waterproof wire nuts. I don't think it makes that big of a difference, honestly, but it does have like some jelly in there and these are sealed off with like a little thing in there. I don't know anything about anything, but this is what I went with this time. Boy, I hope this fucking works. It's just funny that there's no graph here to test it. <laughs> Do you have your graphs in your Yukon? Do you have a 93 SV plus? Do you have them in your truck? No. Oh. And that is just about as easy as it gets, I think. I hope I did this right. The funniest part about all this is that my dad takes the graphs off of his boat, so there are no graphs on the boat, so I'll probably have to test the power tomorrow. Just bring one of my graphs um, and test it, but so now that all this stuff is connected, now we're gonna drill the hole in the front deck right here to get all the wires through because everything essentially can get put right in there and clean that install up. So this was my biggest fear, I guess the easiest part, but uh, it's done and hopefully everything is touching in there. Electrical stuff is not my forte at all, but I think I think it's gonna work. This first. There's already, is that, is there a screw right there? Yeah, there's totally a screw right there. Okay. So it's gonna have to be, up a little bit, I think, or down. Yep. Probably down, hey? I would do it down. Yeah. yeah. So do it equidistant between the, uh, so you have the most wood between the sea light, you know, equidistant uh, amount of wood on each side so it doesn't um, crack out. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, Dad. All right, now it looks pretty good here. So that's where we're gonna mount the sea light adapter. We've got all the wires through this hole here. That's where the black box is gonna be. We'll plug all that in in a bit. So now let's get the sea light adapter drilled on. That's where the battery's gonna go. Good to go. Beauty. Okay, well, uh, just like every other project that I uh, do, we kind of forgot about the actual transducer plug that is kind of important that has to plug into the black box. So not a big deal. We're just gonna drill another hole up here because his transducer cord, we can coil it up behind the cushion right here because that's where his pole's gonna be. Uh, so, I mean, it's not gonna be the end of the world to have another one up there. We can get some caps to like clean that up if we really need to, but I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal. So not, again, not the end of the world. We've been pretty lucky so far to not run into actually any snags. So that's what we're gonna do is drill out another hole, right? With that bigger one. Okay, more drilling, sorry, dad. Woo! 
Okay, so I think we're at a point now where we can probably put the black box in the compartment right there and get things hooked up. Uh, we still have the pole over yonder drying with that first coat yet, so we've got to throw the second coat on that one. What else am I missing? Actually right. getting, <laughs> bringing a graph and hooking everything up to see if uh, it actually works, that would help. So yeah, I think uh, like tomorrow, like in part two of this video, we're gonna get a couple of black caps to put over those holes just to kind of clean up the area. I mean, it still looks pretty awesome, but obviously this is gonna be all coiled up on its own somewhere in this area right here. And then again, tomorrow we're gonna mount the ram mount right there on the rail system. So it's coming together pretty nice. Uh, my dad's boat is driving me insane right now with uh, lots of leaves and stuff because he stores it outside and it even gets in there underneath the cover. So I'm gonna try and maybe get some of that stuff cleaned up, but hope you guys are enjoying this video so far, this install, things are turning out pretty awesome and I'm excited. All right, what do you think? I think it's awesome. One thing too guys is it's really important not to put a bunch of tension on the live scope transducer wire because it's very sensitive. So this is one of the reasons we did drill this bigger hole here. And one of the reasons when we go down the live scope pipe that we have, we're probably gonna use electrical tape instead of zip ties because that just does not put a bunch of pressure on this yeah. wire. There's like a lot of little micro wires in there, hundreds or something, really sensitive. So, all right, well, yeah, we're just gonna start kind of stitching things up. Uh, next time you guys see this, the black box will probably be in there with everything kind of tied up and uh, yeah, so let's do that. There we go. All set. What do you got there, G? Super shuttle. <laughs> All right, little mid-evening, mid-project update. So we took a break. We went to Menards to get a couple of the things that we were gonna do tomorrow that we could actually do tonight. So we cleaned this up really nice. So we got a couple plastic grommets for those holes right there. So it looks a lot cleaner. They did not have the sizes we need and in the same colors and that's fine. So dad, you're just gonna have to deal with that. But that looks super good. So that's where the transducer wire is gonna come out of. We're gonna bore this hole out just a little bit more to get the power and network cable through there and then one extra little surprise that I threw in last minute we're just gonna go ahead and give dad the King Kong Ram mount to put right up in front right there this is actually one that I bought for myself a couple weeks ago because uh, I put a new one at my console realized it was way too big uh, I hadn't returned it yet but I figured for this project my dad is gonna love that screen being like freaking way up here and that this thing is just like, that's beefy. So that's what we're gonna do now uh, before we bore out the plastic. We did epoxy these grommets in there. So we're letting that epoxy set up right there so we can bore that out, get the wires run, get the new mount put up. But most importantly, I just wanted to let you guys know that my electrical skills were on point. Pop the old battery in and guess what? Oh, we have power. So that took a lot of weight off my mind. Um, so yeah, now that we're just gonna finish up these little odds and ends, eat our pizza shuttle for the night. And then I think that's it until tomorrow when the Ram mount and stuff arrives. So yeah, we'll show you what it looks like after we get the uh, new Ram mount on. Zero, zero fun. That's not the fun part. So I'm gonna stretch it out. <laughs> I think we go with that. I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ever. That is, that thing is freaking huge. That, I mean, it's just like so epic because this front deck piece is gonna be here and he's just gonna be sitting in front of this giant TV screen. Like, I don't know if 
the video even really does justice to like how big that is, but he's gonna be pretty happy with King Kong. So now all we've got to do is bore that hole out a little bit, put these wires back in. And I think, is that it? That's, yeah. we're pretty much done for the night until tomorrow. So let's get that done. I'll show you what the finished product looks like here very shortly. All right, boys and girls. Well, we are gonna consider that a wrap for the evening. Uh, super, super impressed and uh, super jacked on how this installation turned out. Definitely not what I was thinking. I mean, I was trying to make things way bigger of a deal in my head um, than they're supposed to be. So, but this is like, I'm kind of speechless. This is awesome. So if you guys haven't been watching this whole entire video, we've got the battery set up on the sea light adapter right there. We went ahead and bored out that hole right there. So nice and super neat. Got this one right there for the transducer cable. Obviously the transducer cable is gonna be ready for the pole tomorrow uh, when the ram mount for the rail arrives. We're not gonna drill into his gunnel. We're gonna put it up on the rail. Black box is tucked real nicely up in this compartment. Everything just looks so good. Put the rod sock on there and obviously old King Kong. That thing is not going anywhere and it is super Super solid, everything is working as is, and I'm just so freaking pleased. That being said, uh, I think the next time you guys see me and Grant will be tomorrow uh, in the afternoon. I think we are gonna take some time to go ahead and maybe vacuum dad's boat, maybe uh, like clean up all of the console area here. My dad does take really good care of his boat, but he hasn't really gotten to fish that much, uh, taking care of my grandma a lot. So, yep, I don't really know what else to say. It is what, like 10.30, 10.45, something like that. So it's been a little bit longer, but yeah, no, we've obviously got some major cleaning up to do. Didn't think to bring a shop vac or the dust buster, but that's really about it. So uh, the next time you guys will see us will be tomorrow when we're mounting the pole. So hope you guys enjoyed the install. We'll see you in the morning. All right, so continuing on, we are on day two. Uh, it is evening time. I've literally been waiting around all day for UPS to show up for the last part, which was the rail mounted ram mount for the transducer pole. That finally showed up. But in the meantime, this morning, Grant and I did come out, detailed my dad's entire freaking boat. Let's get up in here just so I can show you guys real quick what we did. Washed and waxed every surface inside out vacuumed, cleaned up the entire floor. Not one leaf in this entire boat or one random crappie plastic laying around. Grant cleaned off all the entire dash surfaces, Windexed the windows. Again, up here, every surface uh, got everything vacuumed out. Cleaned down, this boat is honestly probably cleaner than it's been and I'm not sure how long. I can't wait for my dad to see it so he can tell me when the last time this boat was this clean because it was probably when it was brand new. So now our goal is to that we have the correct Part, our goal is to get the rail mounted, ram mount mounted. How many times can I say mounted? This is the part right here that attaches to the rail. We're gonna go ahead and use a little piece of rubber, cover that up so dad doesn't get upset about potential scratching. That just attaches from below with these baby U-bolts. This right here is what affixes to the ram mount to the pole. We're just using the standard medium size ram mount, just like mine, the 6.25 inch, I think right there. Lock nuts for everything. These are the U-bolts, uh, the two and a quarter or one and a quarter inch U-bolts that we're gonna use for the pole, which fit so nicely. So yeah, that's really about it. I guess the one other part that I forgot to mention that we did do for my dad is the uh, zero degree mount. So pretty much if you guys aren't familiar with the zero degree mount on the live scope transducer, that just makes it so there is no offset on the transducer because the one that comes with live scope is offset just a little bit. It's actually meant to go on the trolling motor with that transducer on the pole itself you'd actually have to be dropping your baits a little bit to the left to be able to see them. But with the zero degree mount, he can just put that right out in front of the pole and be able to see his baits. So that's the one other thing we did forget to mention that we're doing. So yeah, there's really not much left at all. We're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. The next time that you see everything, we will have that ram mount on the rail and potentially the pole mounted. So let's get after it. There we go, look at that, just 
perfect. So we've got it so it's vertical, straight over the side here. I don't think his uh, live scope pole is gonna bump the rub rail too much, but I think that that works just perfect, nice and secure. He can always move it left or right, depending on where he's sitting at in the seat, but I was up there before and figured that that was gonna be a good spot, but all he's gotta do is just loosen these up and shift it down if he needs to. So now we're gonna get the uh, live scope pole here and get that affixed to this portion of the ram mount and then get the transducer rigged up and then that's pretty much it, so getting really close. It is transducer time. Okay, so if you guys didn't see my previous video from last year when I made one of these for like the very first time ever, so what we've done here is affixed this ram mount. You know, it's just a basic electronics mount. It's the medium arm. This uh, plate right here accommodates seven to nine inch graphs, but we just use U-bolts right there on this other side that are affixed to this. On my dad's here, I did put a piece of rubber right there so that these U-bolts don't scratch all the paint off in the first like day. But yeah, I mean, as you guys can see, this is a big one. But again, my dad's boat does draft quite a bit more than mine. I mean, worst case scenario, if it ends up being like way too long, I can always make him another one. We were just kind of shooting in the dark with the 60 inches. But now with this mounted, we can go for the transducer. So let's do that. Anything else you use that torch for, Grant? Not a thing. Hmm. We have a transducer. So I didn't really film a lot of the like mounting of the transducer because I feel like that's not really something that a lot of people really need that much help with. But what we did was we've got all the slack back behind here in my dad's little netting situation. And then the transducer runs obviously all the way down the length of the pole. We did use electrical tape to secure that instead of zip ties because that uh, transducer cord is obviously very sensitive. Left about a, I don't know, four to five inch loop at the bottom so that he can spin freely all the way around. And then we've got the zero degree mount mounted right there. And yes, for everyone wondering, this is the correct orientation for the transducer when mounted on a pole. There's a, like a lot of controversy uh, that I see in the Garmin Electronics Facebook group about how the transducer orientation needs to be on a trolling motor versus a separate pole. And that is forward facing when you're on a pole. So I guess the last thing that I need to tell you guys is, oh my God, we are actually fully done. I did try and get my dad to come out tonight and pick up the boat, but he had to work. He's not gonna be able to until tomorrow. I have a guide trip tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna rush home from that, clean up fish, get ready, meet my dad back here with Grant for the actual reveal. But let me just real quick, take you guys up into the boat into his little new cockpit office zone up there. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Perfect range of motion when sitting down. And then also if my dad stands up, which he rarely ever really does, he also does not have to lean over or anything to operate the pole here. So everything is just about perfect. So with that, uh, the last like little odds and ends that we are gonna do before people comment about it is we are gonna shave off the excess of the U-bolts right here and also shave the excess off of the bolts, U-bolts on the uh, ram mount also. But that is it. I am going to finish my beer, go home and get a really good night's sleep for my guide trip tomorrow, and then uh, try and be prepared to potentially see my dad cry. I'm not exactly sure if that's actually gonna happen, but he's gonna be so excited. It's gonna be a really nice day tomorrow. So again, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I tried to keep this one just a little bit shorter because the install yesterday, there were enough steps that I did wanna go over and show everybody step by step step the entire process but as far as mounting the transducer to the actual pole itself there's really not that much to it so that's all i've got for you guys tonight i will see you tomorrow for the official reveal all right guys well today is the day i just talked to my dad he's gonna be here probably in the next like eight to ten minutes so uh this morning while i was on my guide trip grant came and shaved off the last of the U-bolts on the pole and the last of the U-bolts on the ram mount over here. So those are all nice and neat. So that's it. It's all stitched up, ready to go. I'm super excited. I'm kind of nervous, to be honest. I have no idea what his reaction is going to be. I've been trying to formulate how I'm going to spin this when he actually shows up, but I guess we're just going to kind of wing it. So he'll be here shortly and uh, we'll meet him outside. Oh boy, he's here. Let's go get him. Okay. 
Let's go. All right, so speaking of retirement, I just wanted to do something nice for your retirement okay. that you might not have otherwise done yourself. Okay, okay. so let's, let's take a peek in here. I knew it! I called it! <laughs> God, Look at what you so look at this. Look at that. Are you crazy? Uh, I don't know what to say. Well, does it come with instructions from you? <laughs> Hop up in there and then go sit in the yeah. chair. So we did also detail and washed and waxed the entire boat too. So this boat, here, just hop up in there. I mean, we vacuum. There's not one leaf or random shitty crappie plastic laying That's around. That's what I was hoping it was. <laughs> you would just vacuum my boat out. <laughs> this is your new office. Your retirement office. I don't know what to say. You're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called a lot worse in my lifetime. I trust, trust me. Holy crap. So we've got, okay, so yes, I do have another extra battery and the charger for that. So okay. this, we took, we cut the power to the, your bus bar down there. Okay. And then this is, it's just like my setup. So, I mean, that's, this is charged, ready to go. But your black box here, open that up right there. That's where your black box is. Oh, so that's wow. no more, no longer used for storage except for that. But here, look what we did. See, we put the nice grommets. We did, you know, well, you'll see this whole video when it's done, but uh, we did some drilling. It looks good. And the ram mount, look at the sweet ram mount. We got the rail system here. With, we got a little piece of rubber there so it doesn't scratch it. What do you have to say for yourself? I don't have anything to say. Don't put this out. Too bad. So now you have all my waypoints and you have live scope, so you can't complain to me anymore about going to my spots and not catching fish now that you have live scope, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm still not gonna catch fish. I can, I can, I can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, do you have any final last words? I just, <laughs> no, I don't. Just thank you so much, Brian, and thank you so much, Grant, for all of this, man. All right, well, we had to skip over a lot of the emotional stuff and everything like yeah, that, but so. dad is super jacked, so we're gonna get him dialed in on LiveScope. So thank you guys again for coming along for the ride. Thank you guys for making all of this happen and uh, hope for more continued momentum on the channel. So Grant, close it out. Have a good evening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>